Hello? Okay. Uh, hi. All right. My bad. I, I, uh, I think the cable is not very stable. <laughs> okay, not much better. Um, today we'll continue to learn this momentum method uh, and why it can achieve this accelerated convergence. And uh, but today we'll not use the toy problem we had on Friday. Okay, on Friday we analyzed. On Friday, we analyzed. Uh, uh, someone did a mute. Uh, there we go. Um, so, on Friday, what we had was this simple uh, model problem. It's a one dimensional quadratic function. Uh, like I said, I know uh, many of us uh, will not continue uh, our career, for example, uh, dedicated to optimization, you know, or gradient descent or machine learning. But uh, what I would like us to take from this class is like the thought from an applied mathematician. Like this is like universal. If we want to tackle some problem, difficult. So we start from something simple, okay? So for example, our ultimate goal is to optimize, you know, this non-convex function, right? But we start from something simple, for example, convex. And now if we think, for example, n-dimensional notation is too difficult, too cubosome, we start from something simple. Um, that is, uh, we start a 1D problem. Okay, so today, uh, we'll go back, okay, to our ND problem. So, uh, general case. Why I'm saying not so general case is because we, we still consider um, the uh, this uh, uh, positive definite, let's say a positive matrix case. So, but we consider this a simple, uh, what we call a linear regression problem. So uh, it's the uh, simplest one to analyze because it falls back to what we have learned. So uh, our linear regression problem is uh, um, sorry, let me put W here. So. So we can view uh, we 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 can view our uh, problem as this. This is linear regression, um, and it actually falls back. So let's try to simplify first. Okay, it can, kind of falls back to our, um, but let let's simplify first. Okay, so this is nothing but one half. Um, a w subtract y so uh, if we have taken um, 449 uh, last semester uh, this is in the final review that uh, i ask us to um, to derive the hessian and uh, uh, and the gradient of uh, this problem because we're going to use this semester um so if we simplify we'll get basically uh, one half um a w transpose a w subtract this uh so essentially we can treat like uh, this as uh inner product okay so uh x dot y is the same thing as x transpose y or y transpose x so i kind of you know abusing the notation a little bit and uh 
then what happens is we can simplify this as one half. Um, so we have this y dot of a w subtract one half of a w dot with y. Then lastly, it's plus y transpose y. Okay. And then we found these two are actually the same term. I mean, given if uh, if a is symmetric, sorry, and then a is not symmetric here. So let's still try to simplify. Okay. So what we have here is uh, um, so this one is already um, if we rewrite it as w transpose a transpose a w. Okay. So as we can see, this is our Q. So we had our problem. Our model problem is, uh, our model problem was one half W transpose Q W subtract B transpose W. Okay. And plus maybe say a constant. And because adding a constant or subtract a constant, it doesn't affect, uh, our minimum or maximum. So, and then subtract. So this guy, uh, let's see. So this guy is uh, a W transpose, maybe say Y. And this guy is, uh, uh, this guy is, oh, it's actually the same, right? <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Okay, um, so it's actually, they are the same. Okay, um, and then we rewrite this as, okay. Then we rewrite this as um, this one half W transpose A transpose Y. So we kind of combine uh, these two terms together. So subtract one half. So we combine these two terms together and remove this uh, uh, one half factor. Okay. And plus this. Okay. So as we can see, this is our B vector right here. Okay. So essentially this linear regression, this linear regression problem is still a quadratic problem. It's just our Q matrix. So this is our Q matrix. Uh, we can see that. Um, so for example, uh, in this case, in this case, the gradient of, uh, of F is, uh, is Q, W, subtract B, right? But then in the linear regression case, okay. In the linear regression case, our Q is like A transpose A, okay? So it's A transpose A, W subtract B. B is, uh, B is, B is this guy. So A transpose Y, so it's A transpose Y. And our Hessian, so the Hessian of F, uh, we learned, we've learned that the Hessian of F is uh, uh, in this Q. So uh, it's nothing but this Q and which is A transpose A. And this we have derived uh, last time uh, in the 449. So here is a quick like review of what happened uh, back in 449. So this is in the review of 449. Um, I do wanna, I do wanna um, have a remark. So A in the linear regression problem, A is normally assumed to be a full column rank. So A is assumed to have full column rank. What does that mean is a full column rank is like A, A is essentially our data matrix. So uh, let me talk a little bit about linear modeling statistics. A is essentially our data matrix. So A looks like this, okay? So A is like a long and thin matrix. 
So A is this dimension. This is dimension capital M. Uh, and this is uh, little dimension, uh, little n. So which is our, uh, this dimension right here. Okay. So then this is multiplied by a column vector. So this is W, okay. So W is like, uh, W is like uh, one and this is N. So this is like W, this is our A. Um, and each row of A, so for example, if it's ith row, so ith row is like ith sample. Okay, so ith row. I throw of uh, of a is like I sample, and this is this is exactly how we store data in Python. Uh, is uh, each row represents like a, a sample, and each column. So, for example, the jth column, the jth column uh, represents jth feature okay so for example uh for image it might be some you know pixel in some location and uh, um but it represents jth feature and we basically uh full column rank it means uh so full column rank it means uh the features are linearly independent, even though, even though this is uh, uh, not so true. So this assumption essentially means that we have cleaned our data so that uh, we have linearly independent features. So this is this means the data uh, is cleaned such that features are linearly independent with other features. So we don't have repetitive features. For example, uh, if we t if if we went to you know you know Kaggle to take any uh, this a tabular data uh, computation, we'll see that many of the features are actually linear dependent. For example, they are essentially asking you the uh, they are essentially categorizing the the samples um, you know using repetitive this criterion, for example, um, like, uh, I don't have very good example right now, but in real life, the data uh, are, are not this good. Okay, so this is ideal case. So A is our data matrix. So A is our cleaned data matrix. Okay, so then we're kind of solving a linear regression problem um, is, uh, uh, and why is, um, is the ground truth. Okay. Sorry. It's a ground truth. All right. So this linear regression problem is essentially W is our model, uh, is, you know, data matrix times W subtract our ground truth. And we want to minimize the square difference. So, okay. And now let's try to um, now let's try to uh, derive what happens. So um, so back to the so momentum. So GD with momentum. Okay. Okay. So now we have back to this question. GD with momentum. And uh, let's recall what's our GD. So WK plus one equals WK uh, subtract alpha gradient evaluated at WK, but then we plus. So the contribution from previous iteration. Okay. So this is our GD and this is our momentum. So idea is the same. If um, if the momentum 
is in the same direction with the gradient, with the negative gradient, then we move a bit further in that direction. However, if the gradient changes direction, the momentum helps us correct uh, that direction. Okay, so, and now let's derive it. So uh, if for the, um, now for the, um, and let's assume, so for example, um, so, okay, for the, uh, the minimization, which is linear regression problem. So for the, so for this problem, and we basically will apply the gradient descent with momentum on this problem. Okay. And, uh, uh so we basically, we take gradient. So the gradient we have derived that is right here. Okay. So um, the gradient of F evaluated at uh, W K. Um, and for simplicity, um, let's still uh, derived like using this. Uh, so uh, W it's uh, this is A transpose A W K subtract A transpose Y. Okay. And the for simplicity, for simplicity, let's still denote uh, this. Let's still denote. Let's still denote this as Q W K subtract B. And uh, um, and when we analyze, when we analyze uh, in the ND problem, it's easier. So when we analyze the ND problem, if we look at the essence of, uh, if we take a retrospect of, of what happens in the 1D analysis, one key, One key is to like, uh, is to bridge, where was it? Oh, right here. One key was to bridge the, um, the K plus one XK um, with K minus one. So this, this is like the key is to bridge the K because for the GD, we don't have this term, all right? But for the momentum, we have contribution from uh, one previous iteration. So it's pretty much like, for example, so let me scroll down. So if we think about, if we have an axis, okay. So if we have a time axis, for example, this is X zero. Um, so this is W zero, W one, W two, W three w4 it's pretty much like when we're doing you know this momentum it, barring barring the first like ignore this one so when we start update w2 we have to use the two from here so so for example so we need to use these two. And then when we start to update this one, we got to use these two. Okay. And similarly, let me change another color. Maybe say this one. When we start the update W2, uh, W4, we need to uh, use the previous two. So the key is to bridge like the consecutive three iterate, okay? So how do we qualify it? How do we quantify this convergence? So originally, so let's recall, for GD, our analysis is done, for GD, our, 
our like a bound is something like this. Okay, so uh, this is our next iteration. This is our best possible neural network. You know, so we want to get uh, something like uh, so. This is uh, this is some constant. So this is let me use row. Okay. Yeah, row less than one. Okay. So we hope to get this kind of bound. But for momentum, for momentum, getting this one shot of bound is kind kind of unrealistic. Remember, in, in previous, we use this. This is like cheating. <laughs> this is already no. So for example, this one. Yeah, right here. Okay. This is already, so why I'm saying cheating, this is already assume we have this linear convergence, you know, because linear convergence, it, it, it's in this form. So we are essentially, we are, we are simplifying this problem too much. Okay, that, that's in 1D, but, but we just want to illustrate, okay, so momentum can accelerate uh, this convergence a lot. But uh, technically speaking, that's cheating because we assume it converges linearly first, and then we derive a blah blah thing, and we get linear convergence. You know, so a bit circular, but that that that's like a, an illustrative proof. It's not a rigorous proof. But today, what happens is uh, we'll perform a more rigorous like analysis for the momentum. So why we we recall this is this is for uh, the uh, next iteration subtract the best previous iteration subtract the best but uh, for momentum because of this nature that is three terms are involved we want to analyze so for momentum okay the analysis uh, is done for like a couple so that is uh, W K plus one subtract the best W and uh, um, and W K subtract the best W. Okay. So what does what does this mean? What does this mean? Is we hope to get a bound. So is we hope to get something like let me just copy this okay But let's look at this side. Here's instead, it's something like this. Okay. This is what we hope to achieve. So instead, instead of a uh, uh, big, this this is a uh, this bound is due to the nature of the momentum because we have this. Uh, uh, like a update rule involving three term. And this will be the theme. Um, like even if, if we have more terms involved, the bound is normally look like this. So now let's start. Okay. Um, and now let's start. So what, what we wanna do is we, we still perform as if we retreat, we, we analyze, you know, like uh, we write down the error equation for each term. So uh, let's do it. So for example, this we have, this is WK plus one, subtract the best possible W star. Um, oh, by the way, I, I, I forgot to mention the existence of W star. So let me just add uh, a bit right here. So um, for this problem, okay because we know that uh a is like a uh, a is column 
ace column rank is four so we have this is uh this is positive and that's why um so this has solution so it has a unique minimizer w star such that w star equals uh, a transpose a inverse a transpose y okay i mean if we if we've taken um linear models in statistical 101 this must be a very familiar equation to us this is nothing but the solution to the normal equation okay what i want to say is this equation looks like a pretty easy to solve but in fact it's not when especially when we have many features and uh, this matrix is dense okay inverting this matrix uh is is not so in real life in in small toy problem in our college class linear regression it's feasible okay but in real life inverting this matrix is prohibitively expensive and sometimes it's not even well posed so that that's why we we you know we use optimization to to solve this problem instead of uh, you know solving this in one shot so um okay so uh and uh, this w is uh for example this w is our w star is our best weight and the uh, we just write down this is like a joint vector okay so uh we write down so basically we write down our um gradient descent so we have so we write we write down our momentum equation so for example this is uh, wk subtract w star subtract alpha f sorry gradient of f wk and then plus the moment whoops plus some momentum okay so that that's our first time and the second time we we kind of keep it as it was okay And now we just plug in what, what's uh, what's here, and we make use of uh, we make use of this fact. Okay. So. Uh, what happens is we can do. So what happens is subtract this alpha q. As we can see, it's this term is exactly the gradient descent term we had in our analysis. Okay, so this error equation. I mean, if we have followed along from four four nine, this error equation must be super familiar for us. And then we just add this momentum term. Okay, and we we write down just this as it was. So uh, we further simplify a bit. This is I minus alpha Q. Um, um, WK minus W star. Okay. For this term, We have to do a bit uh, manipulation. Now let's look at our right hand side. All right. Our right hand side is not WK subtract WK minus one. Okay. 
our right hand side has an extra this w star which is the best and we never we see this the common trick is we just insert w star for example this we will get this uh uh beta uh wk subtract w star then subtract beta wk minus one subtract w star okay so this is we artificially because because like i said earlier uh our goal so our goal is to obtain a bound like this all right um so that's why we want to you know rewrite the term in turn in in terms of this okay so this is like uh the the thought process of applied mathematics is uh we know the result already and you know we want to make assumptions to reach that result so okay and we keep the denominator as it was and now we can use matrix um so let me simplify uh one second so for example what we can do is uh uh we can combine this term even more so this is so these two are the same right so these two terms are the same so we kind of combine them together okay this is w okay subtract the best one and this is we we just add this whenever we have this beta we just add an identity matrix here so we'll see why later uh we'll see why uh, this will be handy in a moment and we add an identity matrix here as well what happens is this vector can be then written as block matrix product okay so that that's a key that is uh we can then rewrite this vector as a block matrix product of what of uh wk minus w star and wk minus one minus w star and we'll see that in the moment this is our error equation so let me move this uh whoops so let me move this uh whoops my bad So let me move this right here and let me copy let me copy this uh down okay so this will be our uh, air equation for momentum now let's think about so we have this term, the, 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 this is like columns, and this is like our first row. So our first row is this guy multiply with this, and this guy multiply with that, all right? And we have exactly something like, uh, um, why are minus here? Let me think if uh, it's, um, it's correct. So I think we have minus beta. Uh, so minus. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. So what we have here is, uh, so we have our first term i minus alpha q plus beta i. minus beta i and then for the second row we have this guy times this guy but in the second row we have no this term so it's just an identity matrix and this is your okay and this is our error equation 
So this is an error equation. Uh, so this is the uh, error equation for uh, momentum. And the, re the re rest falls down kind of the same. Um, remember, for the gradient descent analysis, okay, for the gradient descent uh, analysis is we we wrote so for the gradient descent is we wrote our uh, error equation as this. This is our error matrix, error propagation matrix. So it's I identity subtract a step size, our learning rate times the Hessian, uh, which essentially converted to, we want to find like the minimum possible eigenvalue of that. Now it's kind of the same, but the only difference is our matrix is just a bigger and it's a block matrix. Okay. So now let's, uh, let's analyze it. And let's denote, let denote this matrix as G. Okay. So, so G, this matrix G, and we can further, uh, like, uh, simplify a bit. This is I plus, uh, this is one plus beta. So, one plus beta identity subtract alpha times Q. Okay. The minus beta identity, identity and zero block. Okay. So what we want to do is uh, we kind of want to um, make some eigenvalue decomposition of this matrix, uh, but we we don't know like uh, uh, whether it's positive definite, but apparently it's not a positive definite because this we have a zero block here. But what we want to do is we want to minimize its maximum eigenvalue so that, uh, uh, for example, when we have this error equation, when we take norm on both sides, okay, when we use cauchy schwarz inequality, we essentially want to minimize the norm of this matrix. So. It converts it to minimize the maximum eigenvalue of that. And uh, um, so now for this one, uh, we have to use the, the eigen decomposition. So use Q being positive. So Q is A transpose A is a positive matrix. So this implies what we want to do is we basically, we, uh, we let Q equals uh, matrix, so uh, matrix B, lambda, V transpose, okay. So this is essentially like a orthonormal basis. So, uh, so V is like, V is orthonormal matrix. So orthonormal uh, it's like, a, so it's unitary, okay? Uh, and lambda is like a diagonal matrix. Um, so it's lambda one till to lambda little n is uh, uh, a diagonal matrix with eigenvalues of Q and both and, and every eigenvalue of Q is uh, positive. So <laughs> we're gonna perform uh, magic. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, write down the formula and, uh, um, and you guys just gonna believe me. Okay, so it, it's actually not that bad. It's because uh, because V is just orthonormal matrix. So G can be then decomposed as V, V zero, zero, this block and one plus alpha, I'm sorry, one plus beta identity subtract alpha minus. So uh, that's, 
Let me just emphasize. Originally, it's Q, and now we replace this by a diagonal matrix, lambda. Okay. Minus beta i, i zero, and v v zero transpose. So I'm gonna skip the verification. Given that V is orthonormal, so V V transpose equals V transpose V is identity. Um, the verification of this is not too difficult. So I'll, I'll, I'll speed up a little bit. Um, it's essentially, it's like a, this guy multiply with this guy, and then this guy multiply with this guy. And then we'll see that because V is, uh, is orthonormal so uh v this the multiply with v transpose will get back to whenever we have an identity matrix so same thing here same thing here and then if we have this uh, uh lambda this diagonal matrix so v uh this uh, transpose will get us back to uh, q So now what happens is uh, we can rewrite this as, um, which is so further down. So let's consider what's inside here. Okay. So what we want to do is uh, we do want to find the eigenvalue of uh, so want to find the eigenvalue of this matrix, this block matrix. The reason is because I these two are like a you know orthonormal matrix, so. If we take the characteristic polynomial, uh, these two are like doesn't count. So what's really count is uh, here. And what we want to do is, so we want to decompose it once again. What happens is, and because, because the main diagonal is like already a diagonal matrix, this one is block diagonal. Um, this one is diagonal, this one is diagonal. So what happens is we have a matrix looking like this. Okay. So this is a matrix. And it actually, so it has this block diagonal structure. So what happens is so uh, we can actually use So a pi matrix. So this pi matrix is a permutation matrix. So we just permute these entries so that, uh, um, so it's like uh, it becomes, okay, so let me write down. So um, it becomes like little blocks. Okay. So let me erase this. So this is G1, G2, and up to um, the G little n, okay? This is pi transpose, V, V0 transpose. So it's like from a big block diagonal matrix, we convert it to small block diagonal matrix. So this matrix will be looking like this. So, and each of this matrix is uh, has this entry. So, okay. It, it's nothing but we just permute the entry. It's like, uh, for example, uh, we take this entry here. So uh, for example, so we take this entry here, we take this entry here, we take this entry here, and we permute it so that uh, it becomes this little block. It's like we move this, this column here and we move this row here, okay? 
And because of the all the three are block diagonal matrix, so we can do this. And moreover, each one of them. So where? Uh, so where this uh, G of I is one plus beta subtract alpha lambda I minus beta one zero. Okay. So finally, we have our characteristic polynomial. Right, so uh, so we have. Oh, by the way, I, I forgot. So and moreover, it's because so the original G, okay. So for example, if we want to consider the original uh, this matrix, okay. This is permutation matrix. It. So when we compute, so let's uh, denote this one as uh, as this G tilde, okay. Um, so when we have this permutation matrix, the permutation matrix, so the permutation matrix multiply with lambda identity after you we permute it again, it's like a, we get back. So this is permutation matrix transpose. It's essentially we permute everything back. So and this is nothing but uh, so this is determinant of G uh, this tilde. And moreover, this is G tilde. Okay. So this is G tilde equals this guy. It's like a block diagonal matrix. Every other everywhere else is zero so it's the same as i mean this this is straightforward to prove uh, so we have this okay because we have a block diagonal matrix uh the eigenvalue of the big matrix is nothing but uh the collection of eigenvalues of these little matrix because the determinant of this big block matrix is nothing but the determinant of this times the determinant of that times the determinant of this. Okay. So this implies, all right. So this implies uh, eigenvalues of uh, G is the collection of eigenvalues. of gi i from one to n okay and now let's look at the characteristic polynomial so characteristic polynomial of each gi is nothing but this guy so uh, we have this is uh so we have this is lambda so we have this is uh uh lambda uh subtract one plus beta subtract lambda i times lambda subtract uh minus beta okay so uh we have then we have our characteristic polynomial it is uh oh i shouldn't use lambda i i i my bad yeah i don't have time but uh, because we use the lambda here so let, let me use z here yeah, I think in my notes I use lambda, but then I realize now it's kind of confusing. Okay. Okay, but let me just stop here. Okay. So next time we'll finish this analysis and then we'll learn how do we code this in uh, PyTorch. So uh, this is it for today. And uh, next time we'll continue. Okay, so after we uh, we've found the eigenvalues, what to do?